Hey folks, welcome to Bolts and Brass. Today we're talking about powder. And we've talked about reloading before, we've talked about the different components, we've even to some extent discussed a little bit about powder, but this time we're going a little deeper. Not super far, this is not an advanced video, this is not a video for people who have a lot of experience reloading, this is kind of a intro to what is different about different powders. And pretty sure we've talked about powder speeds, but we'll cover that again. First, there are different kinds of powders. There are different brands. I have three different brands here, um, although a couple of them are actually related. There are different speeds of powder, which is the burning rate. It's how fast does that powder actually deliver the energy that it has stored. Because that's all the powder is. It's stored energy. You are burning something that at a particular pressure, at a particular ignition rate, burns very consistently. So that you get the same amount of energy delivered in the same amount of time every time, ideally. That's how you get accuracy. That's how you get repeatable results and you do it safely. Because if you use the wrong powder, in the wrong cartridge, or you compress it too far, there's not enough room in the case, or there's too much room in the case, you can get unsafe results. So, gonna say this, I'm gonna probably say this again at some point in this video, use the manufacturer's instructions. Whether it's the powder manufacturer itself, whether it's a reloading book like the Spear Manual I have over there, that's very out of date, guys, yes, I use the online sources these days, um, use a reputable source, preferably more than one. Um, there are errors. They're usually minor. They're usually not even errors. They're, they're simply different ways of having measured something where they reach that, that limit of what they're willing to call safe at different spots. And it's not that one's wrong. They'll clarify how they got that result or how they test in the book. And you just got to decide which works for you. The manuals are not conservative, but they are not pushing the envelope usually. They will say when they do. Don't push the envelope. Uh, until you are well past listening to me about reloading, don't push the envelope. Bad things happen. There are ways to do it safely. There are plenty of people who do. I... Certainly, I, I freely admit, I exceed the recommended loads on some of my loads. Not by much. I'm not a speed demon. I'm not pushing the envelope very far. But I load calibers in a couple cases where the load data assumes you have an antique firearm <laughs> with old cases at old pressures. And I have modern firearms with modern cases at slightly increased pressures. But you got to be careful doing that. Bad things can happen. Very bad. So... Getting into it. Powders come usually in plastic bottles. They are non-static inducing, meaning that they're not static free, but it's very hard to generate any static electricity. This is for safety. Powder does not explode. If I drop a match in this container, I will get a shoot of flame coming out the top. I mean, this one's mostly empty, but I'll get a shoot of flame out the top until it's out of powder. It will not be a very fast process. It will slowly burn its way down through the powder. Powder only burns extremely rapidly under pressure. So what happens is, when you start the process, when you hit that primer with a firing pin, or striker, or, or whatever the process is for your firearm, the powder gets ignited very rapidly by that primer. There's a, a shot of flame comes into the case. That starts the process and because there's only so much room in that case with the bullet sitting on top the pressure increases rapidly now what happens is that initial pressure increase creates the environment for the rest of the powder to burn at its expected rate so if you have too much room in the case you can wind up with a very weak charge not just because of the amount of powder but because it doesn't burn properly. If you have 
no room in the case and the charge is compressed, you might actually find that it rapidly increases in pressure. Uh, uh, what used to be, like say a, a tenth of a grain, we'll say, caused, uh, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt here, okay? Caused a 1% change in pressure, okay? Probably more than that, but call it a 1% change in pressure. If the case was already full, if you're already at that limit, and you're now compressing the bullet on, sorry, you're pressing the powder onto the bullet, and there are various ways to do this, uh, we won't get into it, but you're basically putting more powder into the case than there really was room for. That, that 0.1 grain, more powder, might be a 5% increase. Again, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt. But you get the idea. When you start adding compression, you've got to be very careful. The manuals will mark a compressed load, and you'll notice that the amount of change between two compressed loads might be very small with a very big pressure change. Uh, so you can see that several companies use the same kind of containers. Not everybody. Some people use square ones. There are tall ones, there are skinny ones, there are tubular ones. Doesn't matter. Um, it's even changed over time with different companies. They also come in different forms. There are stick powders, there are flake powders, which sometimes it looks like almost like a, a mini cereal grain flake. And sometimes it just looks like a very small disc or cut out square. Sometimes it's so small it just looks like powder. Then there's spherical or ball powder, which, yeah, I mean, usually it's roughly spherical. Uh, I'm sure it's not if you sat there with a magnifying glass, but it's close. Again, they go from rather large down to powder. Uh, I have a couple powders I bought, and I bought them, oh, an election ago, shall we say. <laughs> When options were limited and I was taking what I could get and I bought several pounds. Uh, in one case, I have four pounds of it and decided I didn't like it. Uh, it doesn't run through any of my powder measures cleanly because it's so fine, it actually finds the gaps and spills. It, it just leaks. Different powder measures don't have those problems. The ones I have, they're not great for tiny, tiny grain powder. Then you've got stick powder, which looks like you took a long rod and just chopped it up, which is effectively what they did. Um, stick powder tends to be rifle powder. It tends to be uh, even large rifle powder as opposed to very small rifles. It is, it gets a mixed wrap. Uh, I have good luck with it. But it does tend to have metering issues in the sense that at some point you've got to shave your charge, right? You, your powder measure is somehow stopping the flow for that charge. And usually that's some sort of mechanism that's a wiper of some sort, right? Well, stick powder, there's something sticking up. It's not, it's not a ball or a very small flake. And they tend to get cut or break it just, some people don't like them uh, because of that, that issue. I don't mind them. I have found them to be very consistent. Even when the charge weight is, say, that tenth of a grain plus or minus, they still tend to be pretty consistent. Where ball powder, for me, and again, it raises results vary. For me, I really want to be within a tenth of a grain, not plus or minus, my total range of charges for a, a batch of precision ammo is, say, 42.3 or 42.2, not 42.1 to 42.3. How much it really matters depends on how level, what level of reloading you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. My philosophy on choosing powders. I, I mentioned that I don't mind stick powders and then I don't like super fine grain powder, you'll have your own preferences. If you're, if you're reloading long enough, you will discover that your equipment likes certain powders 
your calibers like certain powders, you may find that, hey, I reload these three calibers, and hey, you know, there's this one powder that works for all three as long as I stick within these ranges. You know, I don't need, I can't do a super light bullet on this caliber, and I can't use a super heavy bullet on that caliber. But as long as I stay within that range, I, I can stick to one, one powder for most of my loading. That's handy. Um, and to some extent, the manufacturers are encouraging that. So for example, we have CFE pistol and CFE 223. And when I mean, they say 223, really what it is is small and medium rifle. This will work for a 223, which is 556, the standard AR 15 round, through 308, and some other stuff in there too. This covers a lot of non magnum pistol calibers. Some magnum, but, but mostly it's non magnum. It's things. <sighs> what is it? I, if I remember correctly, it's from 9mm up. Yeah. So 9mm up through 45 ACP with some wiggle room. Uh, but really, that's the range it's intended for. Now, the beauty of that is that you can stockpile more of it for a wide range of calibers rather than having, oh, I've got this one, I've got this one, I've got this one, I've got this one. And having to keep track of how much you've got of each and juggle, okay, I'm going to load this much of that caliber and this much of that caliber and, oh, i got to buy this. Eh. Unless you're really being picky about exactly what powder you need for a particular caliber, those kind of more general purpose powders are great. On the other hand, sometimes you're looking for peak performance and some little extra on one or two calibers. And in that case, you can get powders that are optimized or just lucked out for a particular caliber. Um, H4350 is probably the most popular powder for 6.5 Creedmoor by a large margin. Uh, this stuff, if you go to a web forum, if you go to a match and you ask, what powder should I use for 6.5 Creedmoor? I would bet that three out of four people say this. The fourth guy has something he likes better, but this will be on the list. He'll be like, well, I like this Vitaveri or you know, this, this IMR powder or but also this one. The reason for that is it fits perfectly. The burn rate is right there exactly for the case size, the bullet weights used, the velocity you want. It fits that niche wonderfully. Now in this case, this actually does fit a range of calibers, but not a huge one. Uh, really, It's, it's fitting in this, this small envelope of pressure range, and it does it well. Other powders cover a wider variety of pressures. Um, the other thing you'll find is that the crossover from, say, a 357 or a 44 Magnum to small rifle rounds is non-existent, <laughs> is one way to put it. Uh, the powders tend to cross over. So my suggestion is, if you're new to reloading, buy one pound at a time. Of If you're reloading 223, buy a pound of a powder. Even, even right now, with things being crazy about for supplies, buy a pound of something you think you're going to like. Try it. Load 20 rounds of a couple different bullets that you're interested in reloading for. Try it. Try different charges. See what works. If you're not happy with it, try something else. There are probably a dozen popular powders. And I'm, again, I pulled the number out of my butt. But roughly a dozen popular powders for 223 slash 556. There's not one that's like, oh, wow, that's the perfect powder. 
but there might be one that works better for you with that particular bullet in your rifle. I've got a pet load for one of my rifles that it wants a particular velocity at a particular pressure on a particular bullet and it only likes two powders to do it. Even if I match that velocity as closely as I can, I, the pressure is probably different. The, the way it develops that pressure is probably different. Something about the other powders, much worse results. And mind you, they're still decent, but I know that with that powder, actually two, I can get great results, superb. Why not? But if I hadn't experimented, if I hadn't tried four or five different powders and, and worked my way through developing loads on each of them, wouldn't know. Once you find one, once you are like, yeah, that's the one for me, buy a bunch. Don't buy a pound or two. Try to find the eight pound jug. Now, the reason for this is that it's consistent. If you buy an eight pound jug, you've got at least eight pounds that is going to be the same. Lot to lot, powder varies a little bit. They do a good job these days making it as close as possible, but it does vary. Get more of it. Don't buy a little bit at a time. If that's your powder for 223, buy eight pounds of it. Even if you have to buy the one pound jugs, buy a bunch of it at once. Buy 16 pounds. Buy as much as you feel is appropriate. Uh, I tend to not keep more than four to eight pounds of anything just because I'm not a high volume shooter for any particular caliber. I don't go through a ton. Um, thus the four pounds of 1680 that I need to find a buyer for. But it is, you don't want to be going shopping constantly. There's hazmat charges if you can't find it locally. If you go locally, very rarely do they have a full selection, unless you're one of those lucky folks who has a dedicated reloading shop nearby. But even if you go to a big box retail, like Home, uh, I almost said Home Depot. Home Depot does not sell reloading powder. Uh, a Bass Pro or a Cabela's, um, they're only going to have a small selection and they might not have a lot of it. Um, you would think they would. Even in normal times, very often, they, they didn't get a ton of it in stock. So, buy significant quantities if that's the one you're going to use. And, again, this is my personal preference, standardize. I have probably four powders that I use 90% of the time. And it makes life easy. Keep it in mind, if you really need just the right thing for a particular caliber, you do what you got to do. But really makes life easy if you standardize, you, you find a couple powders that work for you for bulk of your reloading, buy in volume. Now in my case, that really equals two or three rifle caliber powders and two pistol caliber powders. Really one pistol caliber cal uh, powder but I use another one for my 357 Magnum that, well, you'd, you'd laugh if you knew how little I load for it. Um, I think I've loaded 200 rounds in three years. But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I use more of the powder for my 357 in 300 Blackout than I do in 357, but it's not my favorite powder for it. So, that is it. Go back to the manual, go back to the reloading manual, go back to the websites. Get current, accurate information for the bullet, the cartridge, the powder. Make sure all goes together. Cartridge overall length for a particular bullet with a particular powder. Don't game this. Follow the recipe. Until you really know what you're doing, you really understand what's going on, stick to the recipes. That's it. Stay safe, have fun, keep shooting. Say hi. Oof. Oof. Oof.